What's going on, guys? Welcome back. And today, we're going to look into the crash of Bitcoin happening. If it's something to actually worry about, look into the fundamentals of Bitcoin. Are they looking good? And maybe the difference between price and value, as we all know, you know, times right now are pretty tough for investing everywhere, as every index is in a bear market. So you have to look at value and seeing if that company, or in this case, Bitcoin, if the value is going to be higher than the price it's given right now. And, you know, you come to those conclusions off of looking at what's happening. But first, you do have to ask yourself a question. If you're holding Bitcoin, let's talk about that. That if you are the one who did the research, who is into Bitcoin, who knows, you know, their facts about it and is passionate about it, you will be able to hold through a downturn like this because you believe in Bitcoin and you're the one who put in the work to learn about it. But if you only bought Bitcoin because of somebody else saying to buy it or because it's popular on TikTok or something, or you hear an influencer say to buy Bitcoin, then you are not going to hold through a time like this when times get tough because you don't have the drive, the want, and the knowledge about it to actually hold on to it. So you're much more likely to sell Bitcoin. So if you are holding Bitcoin, I would say go learn about it if you haven't already. If you only bought it because someone else said to buy it, go learn about it. Go on Twitter, go on YouTube, search up people who are big in the Bitcoin space and try and learn about Bitcoin. And if you don't like it, then sell it. But if you turn into liking it, then it gets a lot easier to hold it. And once you can kind of see the value and see the future for yourself and not listen to somebody else trying to do it for you. But to look at the fundamentals of Bitcoin, we can see right here, hash rate, all time high. Literally just hit an all time high not too long ago. Uh, so the hash rate doing great up and to the right. I mean, we have just massively big moves up. Uh, it's good fundamentals for Bitcoin, the hash rate going up, the network getting more secure, attracting more miners, even though the price is down so much, the network still attracting miners, still attracting uh, people to secure the network, the most secured network in the world, uh, still just doing amazing. So that's one fundamental. And another one is this right here, just wallet addresses, unique wallet addresses and that is just just a constant up and to the right which is important because it shows users joining the network people are still continuing to come in regardless of the price and it doesn't have wild fluctuations up or down it's basically a constant flow up so as more people learn about bitcoin more people come in maybe they just buy a little put it into a wall and forget about it and that's their plan but either way these two metrics the hash rate and wallet addresses are fundamental things of showing adoption and strength of Bitcoin that don't need to be reflected in the price because the price is just a market where obviously you have uh, buyer sellers. If you have more sellers and buyers, price goes down, more buyers and sellers, price goes up. And in times like this, when there's extreme fear and panic, the price is going to be driven down. And that's where you get the separation of value and price. So are we thinking that Bitcoin as a network has extreme value or is it going to zero? If you think it's going to zero, then, I mean, you should probably get rid of all your Bitcoin. But if you think Bitcoin as a network has value, then it's not going to zero. And if it's not going to zero, then it's going to a huge, huge price target. And so it's come at a time where Coinbase is laying off 18% of their workforce. I think it's like 1,100 jobs Coinbase is laying off. Uh, so this recession type stuff is really hitting companies hard, especially combined recession with crypto winter. You actually have a very bad combo, which a lot of these crypto companies are, we're seeing a lot kind of go under. Celsius is a big one that's kind of going under now. Now we have Coinbase laying off people. Gemini laid off people. Just everything in the space it kind of laying off people, except Binance. They're apparently hiring more people, so good for them. But crypto, not immune to the macro environment where uh, you know things going on in the macro investing world are still going to affect Bitcoin, still going to affect crypto. They're not immune to it. Like a lot of people seem to think that they should be. It doesn't really make sense, but they are not immune to it. And talking about the price moving down, we can see right here, 
that uh, there's a pretty big pattern when all this stuff starts to kind of talk about the collapse of Bitcoin, saying dips below $225. This is in 2015. And then dips below $2,500 and now below $23,000. So what do we know here is we've been here before. This insane fear has been, we've been here before. It's nothing new. Bitcoin at $225. This was the fear that everyone felt at that price level. And right now, I bet everybody wishes they could go back to 2015 and buy Bitcoin for $225. Well, everyone else is panicking and, you know, loving that low price, knowing where it's going in the future. So if we just extrapolate that to today, it's the same exact fear that we're feeling. It's the same fear in the market, dropping below 23,000. People say Bitcoin's dead for like the 500th time. And yet the story could be the exact same, where in two, three years from now, people will look back and say, wow, uh, those were great prices we should have been buying. I wish I could have bought Bitcoin at 23,000. So it wouldn't be surprising at all to see that kind of cycle repeat itself as it does time and time again. I mean, if we could go back to buy $225, everyone would do that. If we could go back to buying Bitcoin for $2,500, everyone would do that. So what is this going to be different? Is this a time where it breaks and changes course? Or in three to five years, are we going to look back saying, man, I wish I could have got Bitcoin for $23,000 if Bitcoin starts going over 100000 into the six-figure range. Because like we said, if Bitcoin has value and it's not going to zero, then it's going to a huge price target. One of the big problems we are having too in the market is Celsius. So we know Celsius is having big problems. They had that tweet talking about stopping withdrawals. They're just not looking very good. Good chance that they could go insolvent. Hopefully they don't because that's just people's money there's people who put life savings in celsius so let's hopefully see them not do that but people talking about the bitcoin drop won't stop until celsius liquidates and what they're talking about is celsius's uh bitcoin that they have earning this ridiculous yield and stuff that everyone's talking about uh and right now they actually had this paid down so before it was something around like twenty one thousand or twenty two thousand that they would have been liquidated and it would have been a ton of Bitcoin, like 17K Bitcoin uh, that would have been liquidated. But now you can see they, they've put more Bitcoin as collateral. So what they've done is dr driven the liquidation price down to 15K from where it was like 21, 22K before and trying by posting more Bitcoin as collateral. So hopefully, I mean, we don't go to 15K if we do breaking 20k would probably be a big problem uh breaking it substantially and staying below it for a period of time would not be good that that would be a problem and uh so hopefully this turns out to be a non-problem where it doesn't get liquidated celsius makes it out and people can secure their money again uh but you know just a crazy story going on with celsius right now uh as you, you see this right here so this is a little bit later. They've posted more uh, kind of collateral here. But this right here, you know, they posted over 1,500 Bitcoin to bring the liquidation price down to 17K. And they posted even more to bring down to 15K. So they're really trying hard to do that. But if Celsius was to go down, uh, that would trigger probably capitulation. It would be a massive drop in the price. Uh, probably a lot of people coming in to buy it under 20k if it got liquidated. Uh, now it doesn't look like it's going to, but if they did, and there was a fight to liquidate Celsius, there'd be a lot of whales lining up to buy Bitcoin at those prices. It probably wouldn't stay there for long. And to end it all off, you just got to keep in mind to zoom out in Bitcoin. When in doubt, zoom out. As you can see the Bitcoin chart just parabolic and lots of moves down but if you zoom out the moves down don't look that bad ultimately always get recovered and make a new all-time high so uh bitcoin just kind of in this massive move up if you're stuck in the super short term even a year uh it can go down 
but over a long period of time, five, 10 years, it has only gone up. It's only been in a bull market, really. So it's been pretty big in that sense. So Bitcoin actually having a pretty big move down in price right now. Lots of things hovering around, lots of uncertainty with Celsius, lots of uncertainty with the price, with bigger people like Michael Saylor, people saying like 21K, he's got a margin call. He has a small margin call that they're going to, they already said if they got to that, that they would post more collateral and they would be fine. But there's a lot of things going on, macro environments, interest rates. The Fed has a meeting tomorrow. Uh, they're going to rate hike things and things are just looking like they're going to be worse than what people expected. So lots of things going on in the macro, but fundamentally Bitcoin is still doing good, still up and to the right in adoption and hash rate. So ultimately we got to see if Bitcoin is valuable and it's not going to zero then it's got to be going up to a high valuation. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. As always, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. We're in the road to 1,000 subscribers. I'll see you guys in my next video.